Next, we open up all seven constraints.rbb file. So I'm going to add a little bit more smart to some of the dimensions here in my file. So Revit offers us a few different kinds of constraints that we can work with. And I'd like to show you a few of those here. So I'm in this file called constraints. And this is another version of our two bedroom condo. And I'm going to start this area down here. Where this wardrobe is. And you can see two problems. One is that I don't have a whole lot of room for the, for the doorway right here. So I might have to reduce the size of the closet location here. And the next part is also the door of the closet does not seem to be even or centered in this sense or in this case. Now perhaps I'm going to consider a few different positions for this door. So what I can do is I can build a relationship between the door and the closet. How do we do this? I can very quickly use the dimension tool here. I can use the dimension, align dimension tool here. And, and I'm going to mouse over the edge of the closet door. And as you can see right here, it is somehow selecting this default of the core, the wall core center, which is not what we want. So I'm going to use the tab key to select the wall face. And with this, I will move to where the center of this bifold door is and click. And lastly, I'm going to mouse over this exterior wall here. Again, by default, it is selecting or prompting the wall core center, which is also not what we want. So I'm going to use the tab key again to change it to the core face interior. And I will click on that and pull out the dimension here. Now in doing this, Revit will show us two different dimensions here, indicating that this door, this bifold door is not even. All right, we can click on the equal down here, this equal here, that will allow us to fix it and distribute this bifold door right in the middle of the closet. All right. So that takes care of problem number one. And problem number two can also be resolved next by, after we, after we are done with this, we can select this wall here and make very small adjustments. For example, I'm going to drag it a little bit smaller. And you notice that the equality is still maintained. So this is the equality constraint that we can put down here. Next, I'm going to show you another instance of a lock constraint. So what I'm going to do is, for example, if there are changes made to the location of this exterior wall in which, I'll show you an example here. Right now, if there are changes made to the exterior wall here, you notice that the gap between the between the door and the wall becomes a lot wider. Now, if this condition is, is not optimal, and if there is a need to maintain the distance of the door to the wall here, what we can do is we can, again, use the Align Dimension tool to create a dimension relationship here. Again, by default, it will highlight to the core, the wall core center, in which we, before we click on it, we would tap to select the core face interior so that we can create a dimension here. 
All right, once this happens, what we can do is we can select this little lock here and we can lock it in order to create a lock constraint. All right, now what happens is should there be a situation where the, the exterior wall or the wall condition needs to shift? For example, if this wall is now going to shift, you notice that now the door will move along with the wall at the given same constraint condition down here. All right. And next, we can make use of this equality condition in a very functional way in terms of our space planning as well. So what do I mean by that? Let me create another equality condition between these rooms again by mousing over this wall and tap to select the interior, the wall face interior, and then selecting the midline, the core midline of the wall in between and then do not finish the command and then again proceed to select and tap okay proceed to mouse over and tap to select the other rooms wall face interior down here okay when we do this what happens is we can click on the eq tool down here and set this to an equality condition, the equal condition down here. So very similarly, again, when the layout of the building has changed or the footprint of the building boundary has changed, what's going to happen is if you notice the change here, the condition the equating condition or the equal condition is still maintained for these rooms here. So again, this will greatly speed up our space planning and also maintain the design intent this way. Lastly, I just want to show you a little bit of variations that we can do uh, on top of just having these being equal symbols. All right. So I'm going to just select this equal dimension here that displays an equal. And you will find that under the property palette, you will see this linear dimension style diagonal here. So if we look for this equality display, if you look for the equality display, by default, it is set to equality text. Now we can change this equality text to value for example and what would happen is the values will be displayed here so again if i were to make a slight change to it to the layout you will notice that the values will change but the values will maintain the same lastly again with this we can make these dimension tags Show a little bit more detail by clicking on edit type and rolling down to this will take us to the type properties dialog box and we roll all the way down to the bottom here under the equality formula okay so I'm going to cancel it again by changing this value to equality formula and then clicking on edit type we can then click on if this quantity equals segments of length here. All right. And then let me just show you this one again. Now we can add the we can add the number of segments inside. And we can add the length of the segments inside. And under the suffix here, we will put a space EQ segments off and then we click OK and OK. Notice now the dimension text displays this very very differently. So it becomes a two EQ segments of 
1974. So if we were to now change the boundary again, and it will now display as two EQ segments of 2024. So you can see that using either lock constraints or equality constraints adds an additional level of smarts to our models. And they are not only one-time modification that gives us value, but they are ongoing constraints that remain applied until we choose to come back and remove them and help maintain design intent in an ongoing fashion.